Make sure you follow me on social media to get updates and ask me questions. Enjoy the video! Something that we have never done at this point is to talk about errors. So in my case I do not have a product with ID1, but if I try to edit a product with ID1 we get this form with no data. So we have to handle these type of errors server and client side. So let's start with the server. In the Laravel project, as you can see here, what we do is to immediately return the product. We do not do any kind of checking to check if the product exists or not. So let's do it now. Uh, first I want to get the product. So product equals to, let me grab this. So product equals to that. And then we want to check if we do have a product back. So if count product greater than zero, then it means that we do have a product. So what we want to do then is to return this product. So return JSON the product. Otherwise, if we do not have a product, then return a response. It will be a JSON again. This time we have an error. So we want to say something like resource not found. And then we can have a 404, which is the status code. Okay, so this is enough regarding the server, regarding the application, the Laravel application. Now in the view application, we want to catch these errors. So inside the edit component, let me close everything else. So inside here, we make a get request. Then we assign the product to our product data. However, we want to catch errors in case we have any error of course so response okay let me grab this sweet alert from here and yeah we are fine so the title will be response dot status which is the status code 404 or 500 for example and then the text will be the error so response dot body dot error because remember this is all we have here. We have error and this is the error message. So we want to access this error. Okay, then the type is error and not success. All right, so let's see the result. If I go back to this, uh, it is not working. Uh, sweet alert, unexpected type of argument, expected string or object, got number. So I suspect that the error is right here because the status is a number. So we have to convert this to a string. So to string okay back to this now it works and you get this pop-up with a 404 as the title which is the status code and then this is the text which is the error that we get from the laravel application so if this is for example one two three at the end and we reload we get one two three at the end okay let me bring this back so yeah this is working now what about errors in the code server side so how do we handle that? Okay, so let me break the Laravel code. Uh, I will see here one, two, three, product one, two, three. Of course, this doesn't exist and it will fail with a 500 error. So if I go back and I reload, we get a 500 error. However, the text is empty because we do not return anything. We just say, hey, this there was a problem at the server side code and we couldn't give you back the request that you maybe need. So yeah. However, how can we fix this? And the most important question, is it okay if we have, maybe let's say, is it okay if we handle errors in this way? Because imagine that if you have hundreds of GET requests to the server, then you have to make sure that you get all the errors, that you catch all the errors. Uh, well, yeah, you can do it right here, for example, with the catch, which of course you can do, and it is completely fine, you can do that. However, the problem with this is that you will have a lot of cats of this, uh, cats of this, cats of that, and it will just be a mess. So instead of catching the errors in every single component, because imagine that here we make a get request. So if it is successful, then we get the product. Otherwise, we display a pop-up. However, you have to do this for every single component that makes a get request or even a post request, a put request, whatever. So you have to catch all these errors. 
And for errors such as 404 and 500, which are pretty much global, right? You just want to say that, hey, uh, this is a 404 error, the product doesn't exist, or the user doesn't exist, or the invoice doesn't exist. And whenever you have a 500 error, then most probably you want to say that, hey, our API is down or it is not working, something like that. So yeah, we do not want to handle errors like this. So what I'm going to do is to cut the pop-up from there and I will go to the main.js file. And in this file, I will cut the errors globally. Now, let me introduce you to interceptors. So interceptors can be used for pre and post processing of the request, which means that you can process the request before you send it to the server. And when a response comes from the server, you have access to it and you can do your processing there as well. So this is pre and post processing. So in our case, we do not want to do any pre-processing. However, we want to do a post-processing. So first, let's define the interceptor. So below our headers, I will say view.http.interceptors.push. So this will require the request and the next. So now inside here, we have to catch the response from the server. So next and then a response. And right now we have access to the response. So the idea is to check if the error is a 404 or a 500 error. So we want to say something like this. If response.status equals to 404, then we display the pop-up that we had in the edit component without any change. However, uh, if the response, the status of the response is a 500, then we might want to do some modifications, uh, especially in the text. So the text here will be something like, we are experiencing a problem in our servers, something like that. It doesn't really matter, just a message to make sure that we have the result that we want. All right, so we just caught 404 and 500 errors globally, which means that if we go back and we reload, we get this 500 pop-up. Okay, so now let me solve this problem here. Okay, back to this. So now if I reload again, we get a 404, a resource not found. So everything works. So this is enough code to catch 404 and 500 errors client side. You do not have to implicitly define the code to catch these type of errors in every single component as we did earlier inside this uh, edit component. Just to make sure that in the Laravel application you do all the checking and return the appropriate responses. As we have done here, for example, we return a 404 in case the resource is not there, it, in case it doesn't exist. In case it exists, of course, we return the response with the resource, which is the product. Now, if you prefer, you can create two components one for the 404 error and the other for the 500 error. So create the routes as well, of course. And when you get a 404, you can redirect the user to the uh, 404 component, right? To the 404 route. And whenever you get a 500, the same. So yeah, if you want something like that, you can do it. In my case, I will just keep the pop-ups. I think it is fine.